What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some incredibly entertaining battles in the Summer Cup submitted to the channel by Bamil93 who's running a triple turtle theme team with Torco, Blastoise and Caracosta and it would appear that nobody knows what moves Torco has because the amount of solar beams that landed against water types through shields was absolutely insane. Now unfortunately this will be a slightly shorter video than usual as this trainer only submitted 10 battles but with that being said let's just get straight into the question of the day. Actually before we we get into the question of the day i've just remembered that i want to give a quick shout out to both colin l as well as draz whose name i cannot say in full at the start of a video otherwise i'm probably going to get demonetized but they were once again very generous with their donations in my live stream yesterday and i really do appreciate the support in my streams because i turn off monetization on my stream so that way people don't miss out on any of the action because they've been interrupted by advert breaks but what of course that does mean is that my only revenue source will come through donations and whilst i don't expect people to donate I am very grateful for everyone that does, especially these guys that have donated very sizable amounts. Now talking about my live streams, I want to apologize for the inconsistent viewing experience in yesterday's stream. If you did join, you'll probably know that the stream went down twice and was also just very choppy throughout. And I did manage to bring it back once, but unfortunately lost a ton of viewers by the time I got it back up and running. And the second time it went down was midway through the final battle of the day. So at that point, there wasn't really any point in me trying to get it back up and running again. I think what I'm going to do is try and get a new Wi-Fi adapter for my PC because I don't think it's an issue with my Wi-Fi. It's just the connectivity of my PC to the Wi-Fi so yeah either that or I might look into getting an extra long Ethernet cable but I am going on holiday in a couple of days time so I'll try and get that sorted at some point when I am back so hopefully it will allow for some smoother experiences in future live streams but apologies for anyone that was in yesterday's stream and with that being said let's finally get into the question of the day what is your favorite animal and if there are any what is your favorite Pokemon whose design was inspired by this animal let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said let's get into the battles now all right, so heading into the first battle, Torko into Polyrath. Okay, this is not a great lead and actually very bad for the entire team. They are running Mudshot though, which probably makes it slightly better for us just because there's uh, a lot less fast speed pressure than counter. We're going to swap into Blastoise and we're using Blastoise as the save swap to bait out any potential grass types, which of course Caracosta is very much going to struggle against. We go for the Ice Beam, grab a shield back from the opponent. I like that play. Really no point in baiting there. Either just guarantee the KO or guarantee a shield there. We can now come in with the Torkoal and Torkoal is going to benefit from at least grabbing one shield early from the opponent there. They might be less likely to shield the next move coming from the Torkoal. We let the Sludge Bomb go through. The opponent going to come back in with the Polyrath and they do outpace us to the charge move. We're actually going to no shield here. It's just the Icy Wind which does drop our attack but Torkoal does not care. We're going straight for the Solar Beam and it still one shots the Polyrath. They come in with Macargo. We can just swap into Caracosta and we are completely destroying this thing right now. Double resisting the Incinerate damage we can probably live a stone edge or a rock tomb but we're going to shield just to play it safe go for the rock throw farm down and we're able to take that game into next battle, see Snorlax in the lead, so a fairly neutral matchup. Of course, they are going to significantly outpace us to the charge boost here, assuming they're running Body Slam and Superpower. We're just going to no shield the first move, and as we've seen already, Torko is reasonably bulky here. Unfortunately, it just doesn't see that much play because its charge moves cost so much energy. But a very nice catch there, catching the move onto the Blastoise. Remember, this is an ABB style team, and we need to bait out any potential threats to Caracosta, like this Alolan Raichu. We're going straight for the Hydro Cannon, grabbing a shield from the opponent but they will get a huge Volt Switch farm down. Now we've got the move loaded already. I think since they did get a huge farm down, we should just go for the CMP tie. Of course, no, we're going to lose it. But if we didn't throw there, the opponent could get back to back charge moves off before we even throw, which would not be ideal. Earthquake will be taken out the Raichu there. They come back in with the Snorlax and we are going to go for another catch. Very nice. And this time Body Slam is going to be resisted by the Caracosta, and they've got a Turtonator in the back, so turtle on turtle action, you love to see it, especially this way round for us, because of course Caracosta going to completely destroy the Turtonator once again, double resisting Incinerate, shielding up a Dragon Pulse, we can go for a full Rock Throw Farm down, and despite all the stutter lags and visual lags that we've seen in this battle, we can now go for a Surf up against Snorlax coming back in, and Surf takes out the Snorlax, and we're able to take that game. 
into next battle, we see Torkoal into your Nova and Stunfist. So this is not ideal. And again, another core breaker to the team. And But we are fairly bulky, so I think we're just going to no shield the first charge move. And this is what I would do. Mud Bomb does some decent damage there. And they're already at the next charge move. So not ideal for us. They make it to two moves before we even make it to an Earthquake. We're now going to swap into our Blastoise and once again baiting a Grass type. But once again, the opponent is going to allow us to make it to a charge move first. So we can grab a shield with the Ice Beam. The opponent is going to over farm massively with Superior though. And the opponent's going to go for a Grass Knot. So probably not running Frenzy Plant there. Otherwise, I can't really see why you'd have Frenzy Plant and Grass Knot. And the opponent goes for an Aerial Ace. Now, the awkward thing here is both charge moves are going to be resisted. As we go for an Earthquake here, Earthquake is not enough to KO, but we get the Ember Farm down, which is quite nice. And the opponent is still going to outpace us to the next charge move. I think at this point, yeah, we kind of need to shield just to grab the shield back straight away from the opponent. And of course, Caracosta going to take super effective damage from both Mud Bomb or Discharge. And they are also resisting the Rock Throw damage, which is not ideal, but we can tank this. They go for the Discharge, and we basically need something incredibly weak to the Rock Typing in the back to get this win here. We go for the Surf, and the opponent is running Talent Flame, and this is literally perfect for us. Rock Throw damage takes out the Talent Flame before they even make it to a Charge Move, and somehow we're able to take that game. Into the next battle, another neutral lead up against Obscune, but once again, they will significantly outpace us to the charge moves. The opponent is going to go for an Obstruct, which is um, maybe not ideal for us, just because by the time we actually make it to a move here, we're not going to be dealing that much damage. But the opponent is going to go for another Obstruct, as once again, we make a very nice catch. And once again, baiting out an Electric-type Pokemon with our Blastoise, so that Caracosta doesn't have to deal with it. So, if you are running an ABB-style team, this is definitely how you want to play it. If you see a neutral lead, you can stay in initially but eventually you do want to swap out just to bait out any hard options to your back line and the opponent gonna go for a bait there which is quite unnecessary then going for the wild charge they do still make it to another charge move though so we're definitely gonna shield the torco as they go for wild charge number two and at this point we're gonna see the opponent's gonna come in with a mantine so we have 100 energy it looks like we go straight for the solar beam solar beam does about 50 percent of their health we swap into caracosta and the opponent responds with their obstacle now we actually win cmp with the surf here probably gonna grab a shield here as the opponent does use their shield and they might just be going for obstruct again so again we're gonna no shield it is the obstruct they drop our defense whilst boosting theirs but the opponent does not commit to a full counter farm down so at this point we can just safely no shield they're running cross shot the entire time so that's very strange from the opponent there but we get the perfect ember farm down they will make it to an area lace but i think we should be able to make it to a second solar beam before they make it to charge move number two and we do get there in time and of course we've seen the first one already does big damage Damage, the second solar beam when it eventually does land will be taken out the mantine and we're able to take that game into next battle quagsire in the lead so not great gonna say swap into our blastoise and again another core breaker as quagsire does very well up against caracosta but again this is where blastoise is doing the job it's supposed to do there baiting out the grass type which caracosta would get absolutely annihilated by and now we can come in with the torco worst case scenario is the sludge bomb but torco is very bulky they go for an acid spray that's fine with us we can go for the full ember farm down but unfortunately we don't get that much energy as we come out there and we are going to definitely shield this the opponent gonna go for an aqua so possibly we can try and make a catch on the next aqua but no the opponent makes it to a second aqua and we haven't even thrown a move here so by the fact that we've over farm so much the opponent probably should be shielding here but they don't respect the damage from the torque hole and they've got a charizard in the back and we're gonna be able to fully rock throw farm them down it doesn't matter what they throw here dragon claw doesn't do much damage one more rock throw takes out the shadow charizard and we're able to take that game so top tip if you are facing a pokemon you've never seen before and they just continue to over farm and over farm probably just play it safe and use a shield up against that pokemon and worst case scenario they bait but it's it's not the end of the world here unfortunately running into a jellicent running bubble beam which is not ideal and we are going to let the ice beam go through very strange move set from the opponent here we're now going to go for an ancient power of course surf is resisted ancient power does connect it doesn't do that much damage but that's okay i think there's just going to be another bubble beam or an ice beam doesn't really matter either way we can go for the rock throw farm down excuse me there and we can also make it to an ancient power now we are debuffed but 
it's still going to do some decent damage here. So the opponent is going to use their shield. And at this point, we're going to come in with the Torco. And the opponent's going to swap into a Talonflame. They're running Fire Spin as well, which is kind of strange. I actually don't mind this play, of course. Both moves are going to be resisted. But, I mean, like I said, if you're not sure and you're seeing a Pokemon you've never seen before... They're probably just going to play it safe, use a shield there, and now we can come in with the Blastoise. The opponent goes for a pretty unnecessary bait there with a Flame Charge. We can go for the Hydro Cannon, taking out the Talon Flame. And at this point, of course, we just save our shield for the Torkoal. We might not even need it, but Seed Bomb takes out the Blastoise. We come back in, and they do make it to one final charge. We, I think this will just be a Seed Bomb. It is a Seed Bomb, but we play it safe. We use our final shield, and we're able to take that game. So into the next battle, another pretty bad lead for the Torkoal. We're going to swap into our Blastoise. And the opponent is already at a charge boost, so we're going to no shield the first move here. The opponent is going to go for an Aerial Ace. And unfortunately, because I think we threw one Ember before swapping out, we don't even make it to the Ice Beam. And they're already at Aerial Ace number two. So they're getting us into the Red Health range. We are going to continue to over farm. We're actually going to bait here. A little bit risky, but we grab the shield from the opponent. And they are going to make it to another charge move. At this point, we've actually gone nearly into the yellow health range with just water gun damage we're now going to go for the ice beam here and ice beam is going to grab a shield from the opponent so opponent very much wanting alignment here so potentially they've got a second answer to Torkoal in the back. We're going to come in with the Caracosta. They blind throw, so probably just going to be an Aerial Ace. And it is the Aerial Ace. It doesn't do much damage. They swap into a Bomber Snow for some reason. Maybe intentionally wanting to bait out the Torkoal. I'm not really sure. Wet the ball. Not going to do much damage. And the opponent is just going to concede the match there. So very strange from the opponent. But into the next battle. Again, another water type in the lead. So I don't think we've had a single good lead so far. A lot of bad leads and some neutral ones. But nothing great for Torkoal so far. We're going to swap. They just go for a Weather Ball, which of course doesn't do much damage. They then come in with Serena. So again, Blastoise doing what it's supposed to do and actually flipping switch advantage up against this Grass type. They come back in with the Politoed. And this is probably just going to be another Weather Ball. So we're going to no shield here. Weather Ball, not going to do much damage. It does put us into Bubble Farm down range, which might not be ideal, especially if they are running Earthquake as the secondary charge move. But they're going to get a huge farm down there. We come in with the Caracosta. And Caracosta does take neutral damage from these water type moves. The opponent's going to full send a Hydro Pump. So definitely good that we shielded that. They come in with Polyrath though, and this is not ideal. Honestly, Ancient Power is not going to be the best move to go for here, unless you are fishing for a boost, and we get that boost, which is very nice. At this point, we're going to shield here, as the opponent's going to go for an Icy Wind, which is very unfortunate, as they drop our attack. So, our defense is still boosted, so that's fine, but let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're going to go for another Icy Wind there, double debuffing our attack, again going for Ancient Power. I think it's very unlikely that we get two boosts in a row, and we don't get the boost there, so I definitely would have just gone for Surf, but we're going to swap into our Torkoal, catching the move, and the opponent was running school the entire time so i'm not really sure why they went for icy winds up against our caracosta but either way i think we're looking pretty good now as they go for another school to take us out but we should just barely be able to outpace them to the surf and from this range despite being resisted surf gets the ko and we're able to take that game into next battle, we'll see Electrode in the lead. So once again, a fairly neutral matchup here. And we do have Earthquake, which is going to obviously take out the Electrode by the time we reach it. But the opponent can spam Foul Plays reasonably quickly. Not really sure if it means they're not running Discharge or if they just prefer to go for Foul Play there. But either way, Earthquake gets the one shot. They come in with a Water Gun Vaporeon. And you can see we actually weren't taking much damage from those Water Guns. We do eventually swap out and it does make sense. No point letting the Torkoal go down there. Might as well swap into Blastoise. They go for a Liquidate so possibly not running last result on their Vaporeon. The opponent are going to go for a second liquidation, getting the Blastoise fairly low. We're now going to go for a Hydro Cannon. It's not going to do too much damage here, but let's see. The opponent is going to shield this, and unfortunately, they do get the full Water Gun farm down. So we come in with the Caracosta, and the opponent is now going to be able to deal neutral damage with the Water Type Charge moves. So we're going to shield once again. They get the Defense drop this time around, but they come in with Salazzle. So this is looking pretty good for us. We can go straight for the Surf. Grab the shield. We're going to swap into Torkoal, trying to catch a charge move, but the opponent does end up throwing anyways. So that's good news for us. They go for a Poison Fang. We come back in with the Caracosta. This should just be another Poison Fang, but we're going to play it safe. Use the shield anyways, and we can just go for a Rock Throw Farm down. Can we outpace them to the charge move? The answer is yes, we can. And once again, from this range, Resisted Surf takes out a Vaporeon, and we're able to take that game. 
And into the final battle, we see a Shadow Slowbro in the lead. So once again, not a great lead for the Torkoal, but it hasn't really phased this trainer so far. We've still been able to fight back from very bad leads. Gonna swap into Blastoise. Unfortunately, only resisted damage to throw. They come in with a Shadow of Bomber Snow. So that's actually quite a smart play from the opponent there. Basically waiting until we throw and then swapping into their Bomber Snow. They do end up baiting though, which is not ideal, but it doesn't really matter because I don't think they're gonna shield an Ice Beam. They know we've got a Torkoal in the lead, so they don't need to shield that and I mean, we get the full farm down there, but we only get like two embers worth of energy. At this point, we definitely have to shield. They have over farmed massively, but they go for a psychic, which might mean they're not running surf. And potentially instead of running surf, they're running like ice beam, which would be resisted. So I think we're just going to go straight for the earthquake, swap into Karakosta just in case they are running surf here. The opponent goes for another psychic. We can go for the rock throw farm down. And again, the opponent has an incinerate user in the back and Karakosta is just so good up against those incinerate users. Double resisting the fire type damage. We get the final shield. At this point, we could probably just no shield this, but uh, we're going to shield anyways, and we will be able to make it to another surf, and the opponent's just going to concede the match, and we take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day